Ah, uh, yeah, I was born in Los Angeles. Yes. And I was born during the cool season, the winter time. Ah, yeah. And usually you gravitate to whatever season you're born in. You know, I mean, I know there are those who love the opposite season of the one they're born in. But um, usually you gravitate to the one that you're born in. And since I was born in the winter, um, I love the cool season. You know, January was the month I was born. And being born in Los Angeles... A January in Los Angeles is different from a January in New York or Boston or Chicago. You know, our winters are not like their winters on the East Coast. Shout out to all the East Coasters. I love you guys. But uh, being born and raised in Los Angeles, it's it's a different type of winter. You know, the temperatures drop to the low 50s, maybe high 40s, maybe mid 40s. You know, of course, that's nothing compared to others who deal with things in lower temperatures. And right now we're headed into the cool season. You know, I love this. I think that's a, this is the best time to be in Los Angeles, in my opinion, because you can always get warm, you know, put on some layers, throw on a beanie and you're good to go. Um, in some cases, you won't even need that, you know. And I talked to this young lady who was from New York. She just moved here recently. And um, it's kind of interesting. People are still moving around right now, but that's what's happening. People are coming out still to Los Angeles. A lot of things are changing, but more importantly, with us heading into the cooler season, whether you're here on the West Coast or on the East Coast or the Midwest or wherever you are, you got to dress warmer for one, and you have to take those necessary precautions with your health, especially right now. I would say more so now than ever. If someone were to ask me, okay, give me three things that I can do to focus on health, I would say consume more garlic, meditate, and aim for physical prowess. Those would be my top three. Garlic consumption, meditation, and physical prowess. So yeah, my mom put me on to garlic consumption when I was a teenager. Now, of course, you're thinking, ah, garlic, it's so nasty. It's kind of interesting because you know, when you look at vampire movies, garlic is one of the things that kills vampires. <laughs> I always found that fascinating because in real time, that's exactly what it does. It kills germs. It uh, is a great preventive measure, you know, keeps you healthy, you know. Um, garlic tea, you know, you go get some tea, fix it up, right? Chop up some garlic cloves, you know, chop it up nice and fine. And then add it to your cup. Let it sit for maybe three minutes. And then you drink it. Don't add any sugar. Don't add any honey. Just drink it straight. Some of you already know this, but you know. And most importantly, swallow the garlic. Yes, swallow it. You can even swallow it whole. You don't have to chew it. Swallow it. That's right. When you drink it all down, let that garlic go down. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I know. You're like, ooh. <laughs> very, very good. And, you know, you drink that and you can do it once a week. Of course, if you were to drink it every day, then sure, yeah, it would emit from your pores, right? You'd probably smell like it. But once a week, hmm, you wouldn't have to worry about that as much. And if you were to do it at night, right before you go to bed, then you're not going to be around people, so you don't have to worry about that. But it definitely would be helpful. And I guarantee you, you will not get sick often. If this was done once a week, yeah, you won't be getting sick often. Okay, garlic tea or even just garlic water. You know, some of you consume garlic as it is. You cook with it or, you know, if you love Italian food, uh, it's definitely in your pastas and sauces. But um, yeah, garlic tea. I would make that a habit. And then, of course, meditation, which is primarily what this series is all about. Again, you do not need to meditate for two hours for it to be effective. And meditation is laughable for some people. OK, the idea is that you're going inside of yourself. You're giving your inner being more attention. 
because you already give your physical being attention. You give your physical properties more attention than anything. OK, it's this physical battle. You can morph. You can heal. You have to connect these two things and meditation does it. So 30 seconds is enough, especially if it's intense. If you want to do 45 minutes or two hours, oh, yeah, go ahead. OK, I'm not going to downplay the effects of long meditations, but 30 seconds can be just as powerful. OK, and all you're doing is you're going in. Now, some of you think, OK, well, with meditation, my mind goes, you know, I'm thinking about things and I'm letting things go in my mind and I, I don't know how to get rid of these thoughts. Well, that's OK. Let the thoughts go in. Much like anything else, it requires practice, okay? And it will get to a point to where those thoughts no longer enter into your mind. But initially, you will have a lot of thoughts, some of you. Just let those thoughts come in, come out, okay? And eventually, you'll get control over it. The more your focus increases, the more your concentration builds up. You just have to trust the process, okay? Um, for some of you, breathing works better. You can do that where it's 30 seconds of just breathing, okay? Or if you want to chant something, like pick a word and just chant that word for 30 seconds. Success, 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 success. And just do that for 30 seconds, okay? That's a form of meditation. There's different forms to this and there's layers to this, okay? Because if you continue to meditate you will start to experience some amazing things your telepathic abilities will increase your ability to heal will increase the speed of these abilities will increase okay because you can do amazing things it's your birthright god is in you okay you're talking about the ultimate source so when you tap into that during meditation it's like a muscle. If you want to get bigger biceps, you do more curls. If you want to increase your chest muscles, you do some push-ups or bench press. It's the same idea. It's just inner being, metaphysical. So you tap that every single day. It should be the first thing you do before you get up, before you reach for your phone. You get up, you sit at the edge of the bed, and you do it. Or get up, get on your knees, and you do it. OK. Prayer, meditation, whatever you want to call it, you are tapping in to the most powerful source that is inside of you. OK. The third physical prowess. As Affer mentioned, I did an episode about this. And it doesn't matter what your age is. 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, all the way up. You aim for physical prowess from this point here now all the way up. OK, you change the narrative, change it. People say that things dwindle after 50. No, change that narrative and you can do it. So these three things, garlic consumption, meditation, physical prowess, have this be your focus for this week. See if you can do it. OK, if you're going to do the garlic once, try it on Sunday night. OK, meditation. Try it every day. Every day when you get up, try that 30 seconds. You can even check out the episode of the 30 second meditation drills with this series. I do have an episode on that. Try that every day and then physical prowess. If you have not begun a workout regimen, get it started. For those of you that have already begun, Keep going and make this your lifestyle from here on out. Promise yourself that you'll do this. And if you try this for one week, it'll become two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, two years, five years, 20 years. And let me know if it works for you. You know, give me a report on this. Give me some updates. I want to hear from you.